Hey everyone, this is me, you. Welcome to Fun Friday. Every Friday, I try to do something new, fun, or challenging. I'm super excited that I've released two new coloring books called Mermaid Magic and Underwater Coloring Adventure and Unicorn Utopia, a mystical coloring adventure. They're both available in three sizes and formats on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon. More info's coming later in this video. Many people have been asking for part six of my draw one character in 10 different art styles. So here you go. I hope you enjoy. Today I'm going to draw Blossom from the Powerpuff Girls as if she were in 10 different fandoms. So the first style I'm going to draw Blossom in is the style of Gumball and I love how this style is like it's so like it's so cute and I love how they do the eyes and the limbs it's kind of silly but I thought it would be a really interesting way to see if um like to see how Blossom might look like in a very very different world. If you've been following me for a while now, you may remember the time when I drew Pikachu in this style. And some of you have been asking for more gumball related drawings, so I hope you enjoy this one. I like how this style handles the lines and how lines flow into each other and like the straight versus the curved areas so I kept her dress really like triangular very simple and flat looking I like how I did the legs where they're like these long tubes with these little like round feet on the end I think it's so funny and then as for the eyes so obviously Blossom has these giant eyes but I cannot draw them like how they are originally so I tried to like think about the eyes in terms of the style in this universe and I drew them kind of like popping up and over her hair which I thought was a nice little like touch and as for her bow I was thinking how would like how do bows work in this style and then I was looking at um, some of the characters ears and I thought oh actually why not like you know, it is her bow, but it kind of looks like I could make them look like ears as well, kind of, in a way. So I thought that was a nice little, like, nod back to some of the characters in the show. And all in all, I think this is a really nice way um, to imagine Blossom in this style. Aww, super adorable. Okay, this next style I have been waiting to do for quite some time now and some of you have been asking for this so thank you for suggesting me to draw a character in the Kim Possible style. I think this style is really interesting because of how lines flow into each other and it has this lyrical like uh, like flowy movement in like the limbs and the hair so I thought this would be really nice to imagine Blossom who is usually like made out of very like um a concentrated shapes and give her some flow and also this design is going to look more realistic so she's going to look a little bit more humanized and i think that's going to be a very interesting take I wanted to give my drawing more colored outlines as well just to make it fit more into the style so I used my color brush pen to ink parts of her hair and also her face. Part 6 will also include some styles and fandoms that I've never really done or touched on before in my channel and since some of you have been asking for them in my previous videos I decided to include some of them in today's video so and I wonder how Blossom can look like in all of these different styles. <laughs> I just love that swishy movement of her hair in the back and then the way her leg kind of comes down and that like the the curve of the leg and into the feet I think it looks really graceful and I just I loved how I inked the thick to thins oh it was so fun I know this show may be nostalgic for some of you so if you used to watch this on TV let me know in the comments what this show means to you which one was your favorite episode and why you like it so much. 
All right, a lot of you have been asking for this style. This is My Hero Academia, which is an anime and manga series, and I'm currently trying to go through season one still with my brother. Oh, I wish I had more time to watch the things I like, but anyways, I think this is a really interesting show and uh, like uh, story. And basically, I'm trying to draw Blossom, who I'm very used to seeing as a very simplistic, uh, simple character. And I'm going to draw her in a quite a detailed anime style. So I think this is going to be a little more challenging. There is a more, like there's a lot more um, room for interpretation, but also I need to make her look like she is still Blossom. It's just that she is in the style of My Hero Academia. I think the last time I drew something from the My Hero Academia fandom was when I combined an anime character and a western cartoon character together, so that was pretty fun. And I'm glad I get to incorporate more of that universe into uh, this video. Some of you have been asking, how can you get better at drawing your own characters and like different parts like hair, faces, and hands? I made over 50 how to draw books, ebooks, and workbooks, all for the purpose of helping you improve your art skills on tricky areas like how to draw hair that looks natural, how to draw hand poses, expressions, eyes, outfits, and so on. Get the skills you need from my how to draw ebooks and paperbacks, and then practice designing them however you want by drawing and coloring right on ready made templates in my workbooks. I know drawing can be really challenging sometimes as, you know, I was self-taught in my early years and it can definitely be, you know, frustrating or disappointing or even scary when you're trying to improve your art. And that's why I made these books for you to help you on your own journeys. It's like having me as your own personal art buddy right there with you to help you improve your art. I do hope my books really help you. They're all on the Mayu bookstore on Amazon. The link is in the video description. You know, practice really does make perfect. Keep up the good work, everyone. I'm so used to seeing Blossom with the thicker outlines and the flat colors. And so it was really nice for me to kind of reimagine her in this way because the inking, when I was inking the lines, I kept them quite thin, as thin as I could in some areas. And the shading of the colors just really brings out the form of my design a lot more, especially in the hair, really like the shading in there. So it's just quite interested to see how a character can be changed to suit a particular style or a particular universe. And speaking of universes, I'm going to draw Blossom in one of my favorite shows. Currently, this is going to be the Steven Universe style and I wonder how Blossom is going to look like because Blossom and Steven Universe they're both like Cartoon Network shows so it's you know like even within the same like realm of cartoons you can get so many different types of art styles and it's just it's just so interesting I love it I think one of the great things about uh, being artistic is, you know, you are in control of your art and you can imagine a tip like a particular character in any way you like. Like for instance, this challenge. So obviously I'm trying to make Blossom look like, you know, a character in the Steven Universe style, but it's really like you're the artist. You're it's up to you how you want to handle the eyes or the like the shape of the hair. There is a lot of like artistic space still for you to create something that you can call your own. You can create anything you want and there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just your version of something and if someone created something that is similar, that is their version. So it's all very uniquely independent and I just feel, you know, that's one of the great beauties about art. I was looking at the different characters and how their limbs, their hands, eyes, and the teeth were handled and also the hair. And I liked how like sometimes characters have these like really thick bumpy looking teeth when they smile. And I gave her like hair that ends in like little pointy like tips. She looks like this really friendly outgoing girl with hidden superpowers. So I wonder if these two shows had like some kind of collab, I wonder what would happen. 
Let me know your fan theories in the comments. I've been getting a lot of suggestions from some of you for this style, so I'm going to reimagine and draw Blossom in the 1930s Disney style. It's going to be super fun to see, uh, you know, like a kind of more of a modern cartoon, but way back then, so if we're taking like a time machine to go back in time, I wonder how Blossom's going to look like if she was drawn in this era with their aesthetics. So I knew right away that her eyes had to change quite dramatically from the large, like big Powerpuff-like eyes into the kind of like the oval eyes with a little wedge shape inside them. And actually during my research, like I noticed not all the characters in that era would have the wedge shape, like the little triangular um, white area in their eyes, but some did. So I decided to incorporate that into my because uh, into my design because I really liked how that wedge shape kind of defines the eye shape more. And to me personally, whenever I see eyes like that, I just immediately think, you know, 1930s, you know, classic Disney. Oh, also, it was super fun drawing the rubber hose arms and legs for my character. I don't know, it's just something about the rubbery, like, loosey, like, really flexible limbs that I just think it's so funny to look at and really fun to draw. So I gave her these really slim rubber hose limbs with the large, roundish-looking hands and palms. And then, of course, her shoes would be really soft looking. And I was thinking about what to do with her stockings because the original she has like, you know, like stockings all the way up like um, her leg. But in this case, I thought I would like to actually have the socks rolled around her ankle so I can get that little like um, round shape by the shoe. And I think for this design, it just helps the it, it helps evoke that sense of that era better. I also had to think in terms of the grayscale tones and how light and dark each area of her design should be. Here's another fandom that I haven't done yet on my channel. Many of you have been asking for a Rick and Morty style, so here you go! This is gonna be Blossom as if she were in that universe. Yes! This is quite a different style from the things that I'm used to drawing. So I needed to think about how am I going to summarize some of the different parts of the body in terms of simplicity. I'm not too familiar with this fandom and as I was doing more research on the different like characters, I noticed that their pupils have something that looks a little different. And upon closer inspection, I, you know, I realized that they're not little dots. Like the pupils are not dots, they're actually like little like, I don't know, like star shapes or scribbles. So I incorporated that into my design as well. I thought that was a very, very important thing to have in there. And it was interesting to find out, you know, why they have that kind of design element. It's kind of funny to draw Blossom with her eyes bulging out like this. I love how they have, uh, you know, when the characters smile, they have this interesting like bean-shaped mouth and then the, the little silly looking teeth and the tongue sticking out sometimes. So I wanted to incorporate all those elements in there. And then as for the limbs, I went with really slim cylinder-like uh, pieces. And then the feet are really triangular and the hands are quite, you know, different from what I'm used to, which is an interesting way to experiment. It was fun to draw her neck like this with the line sloping like from her head, but they kind of fan out as they get to the body. And then as for how far apart like the like uh, the legs are, it just creates the sense of a squat body, which I think it makes this design funny to look at. Many of you have been asking for me to draw something in the Splatoon style, so I'm going to draw Blossom as if she were in this universe. I think it's going to be super cool because this is a style that I am uh, not used to drawing in. It's quite different from my usual like original semi-realistic style that I always draw in in my other videos. So let's see how differently Blossom is going to look like. I think it's going to be fun. 
I knew I needed to handle different parts of my design in a way so that it suggests like a lot of movement and like freedom of movement but at the same time it has this nice weighted feeling to it. I was looking at the different Splatoon characters and I liked how the hair kind of looks like the, like the end area of the hair has this nice weighted feeling. And so when they're moving, it has this like real physical presence to it. So I wanted to get that feeling into the hair of my design as well. I kind of made it swish around her in the back, but I also added that curved area. So it looks like there's a lot of weight in the end of the hair, which I really like. I like the feeling. And then as for like different uh, parts of her, like the hands, the fingers, they all end with this slightly rounded bigger uh, like area and then her feet are quite large as well compared to like how slim her limbs are so all of these things help create the sense of weight and like dynamic um, energy to my design and also the colors in this style are not so flat they're more dimensional so I wanted to ink my design with my colored brush pens and then as I was actually coloring in the different areas of my design I knew I needed to add layers to them and also some highlights as well to get that like extra dimension and roundness to the different parts of my drawing. So actually this particular design took me quite a long time compared to some of the other ones just because of all the layers I wanted to do with the colors, how I wanted to like form and build the dimension and the different areas of her up through the layers and the shadows and all that. It was a lot of fun but also a lot of work uh, but I'm really glad that I'm able to do a design or like a style that's a little bit different from some of the other styles in this video. Personally, I think the eyes are the most interesting part of this design because, you know, like the Splatoon character's eyes, they're quite iconic, especially with the dark areas around their eyes. And I just knew that when I drew Blossom in this particular way, she, for me, it looks like you're looking at her through a whole new lens. And it's like a different part of this character that you're seeing. It's like she kind of has this new edge now, which I think is pretty cool. This next one is going to be a serious nostalgia trip for me and I'm sure for many of you out there who grew up watching this show. I love the Rugrats and I needed to draw Blossom in this style. I like how in this, you know, in this particular universe, the characters, designs, and the lines aren't so uniform. Like the line width, it doesn't stay the same throughout. It has these kind of like chunks of uh, thick, thick areas, and then it goes thin and then thick again. And then how the arms and the hands and the legs and feet are handled and some of the, you know, the mouths when they open their mouths. It's uh, like they have this very distinctive look to it. And it's not something that I usually draw in my original style. So I love to experiment and, you know, try a style like this. I've also been getting lots of comments from fans who used to watch my videos like years ago and now they've recently rediscovered my channel and I'm just glad that you told me how nostalgic my videos are to you and what they mean to you and that many of you are still into art or getting better at your art skills because of your love for it. And I'm super happy to know that my channel played a big part in getting some of you into art for the first time and you haven't stopped, which is great. Here's to all of you who are keeping your artistic dreams alive. Keep practicing, keep creating, follow my channel for more inspiring art challenges and videos, learn from my books and keep doing what you love. When you practice enough, you can do like literally anything you want with your talent. I'll be cheering for you.
I like how her big eyes kind of sit on top of her hair, and the way her mouth opens and kind of affects the shape of the chin underneath. So it's like little things like this that just makes me feel really like like really good when I try different styles like this. I think she'll be really good friends with Tommy and Chucky, and they'll be having lots of fun together during their playtimes. What do you think they'll be up to? Let me know in the comments! Since some of you told me you love my original anime style and want to see more of my drawings in the style, I'm going to draw Blossom as an original anime character. Although this is going to be in my anime style, I think it's going to look quite different from some of the other anime, like other anime shows and styles out there, like the My Hair Academia style I did uh, earlier in this video, just because of how eyes can be treated differently amongst different anime styles. I love how, you know, in anime, there are still a lot of diversity and variety of styles. For my own style, I tend to like to draw the pupils quite large with lots of nice, bright, shiny highlights. I'm also going to give my Blossom more realistic hair and body proportions. My 10th and 11th coloring books are out now. They're called Mermaid Magic, An Underwater Coloring Adventure, and Unicorn Utopia, A Mystical Coloring Adventure. Both titles are available in three different sizes and formats, the regular soft cover, the large soft cover, and the large hard cover. I'll always be doing the regular soft cover size for my future coloring books, but since some of you have been asking for larger sizes and hard covers, I've also made those additions for both of these new titles. The large sizes will give you more room and space to color each image. The large hard covers will also give you that added protection of the hard covers. Each book is specially made to order from Amazon. On my Mayu bookstore, the large soft cover and large hard covers are in their own series that's right under the regular size coloring books, so it's really easy for you to find exactly which type of coloring book you want. Here's a quick look at each new coloring book. Mermaid Magic is filled with my original designs of glamorous mermaids, beautiful underwater scenes, tropical ocean images, and cute sea animals. These designs range from simpler images to more intricate, detailed artwork. It's great for casual colorists, aspiring artists, and fans of mermaids, anime, and manga. Relax and distress with these serene, enchanting images and let your imagination run free. Unicorn Utopia has a great collection of fantastical scenes with beautiful unicorns, pegasus, and mythical designs. This is great for those who love ponies, unicorns, mythical creatures, and fantasy fans. I created never-before-seen images that range from simpler to more detailed designs. Now you can create your own fantasy scenes however you want. For both new titles, each coloring book has two sets of 25 beautiful designs. It's double the fun because you've got an extra copy of each of my 25 unique images making a total of 50 awesome coloring pages in each coloring book. With a duplicate of each page, you can now experiment with different color schemes like light versus dark colors, or you can try different art mediums or do challenges like what I did before with markers versus gel pens of the same image, or three marker challenge blind pick versus preferred pick. You can also get a friend or family member to color with you, or that special someone. You know, relax together or challenge each other. I know many of you like to color with your family members or friends. It's also nice to have a backup in case of mistakes. There are always chances of making mistakes as an artist, but now there's no pressure to get it right the first time. You just color and relax. Like my other coloring books, you can use a wide variety of markers, gel pens, colored pencils, and crayons. Keep posting more of your coloring creations on Instagram with the hashtag MayYouArt as well as in the Amazon reviews. I'll show more in future videos. Own or gift these lovely coloring adventures for yourself or a loved one. They're on my May bookstore on Amazon. The link is in the video description. Happy coloring! I am loving that shiny hair I'm giving her. It's so silky and swishy. 
I also really liked how I drew her pose like this, where she's kind of like just, you know, just floating there, just a little bit off the ground, uh, with her hair and the way that her skirt is kind of just floating in the air like that. It gives me this slightly magical feeling. Similar to some of the styles that I did earlier in this video, I wanted to add some more layers of colors to like build on the dimension and the shadows of the different areas of the design just to make certain things look more 3D, like especially the shading underneath the skirt on her legs. It just makes that, like, that area look a lot more realistic and I really enjoy doing that. It's been a while since I've drawn a character in the Samurai Jack style, so I'm really excited to turn Blossom into a character in this universe. I'm a big fan of this art style and I knew right away that I needed to uh, create a design that could look really nice without any like big obvious outlined areas. The Samurai Jack style does not really have any outlines except for certain parts, like around his eyes for example. But, you know, other than that, mainly it's a style that does not rely on lines, but rather shapes. And as for Blossom's original design, you know, lines play a big role on how she looks like. So I had to kind of balance the thinking. I had to think about how to turn her different parts of her into shapes that could still read as, you know, this character. And then meanwhile, I wanted to uh, create like dynamic looking parts of the design so they could look cool as just shapes instead of outlined areas. It was a lot of fun to play with the straight lines versus the curved areas to create these dynamic looking shapes. Like especially in her hair, I was thinking why don't I do the like the top part of her head as like just a straight area, like a flat area, not so curved. So that's gonna be a very different look for this character. And also it's um, a refreshing take on something I'm familiar with. And as for the body and hands, I stylized those areas to include a lot more jagged, sharp looking, flat pieces. I just love how rectangular this style looks like. I think it's pretty cool. Which style is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. This video took over a hundred hours to do from start to finish, including the researching, concept sketches, then the drawing, inking, coloring, and editing. It would mean a lot if you could smash the like button, that'll help out the channel a lot, and share this video with your friends. In case you're not already, hit the subscribe button and bell icon so you won't miss my future videos, including part 7. Let me know which other styles or characters you'd like to see in later episodes, and I'll try my best to do the ones I can. Even better, binge watch this entire series. I've made a playlist in the end card where you can see all my other style art challenges to date, and I'll see you right after this video. There are over 50 books now on my Mayu bookstore on Amazon, all in one convenient place. The link is in the video description. See you next week, I've got another fun Friday video. Till next time.